Hey everyone, this is Ergo Josh and welcome to my studio. In this studio, what I do is I do all of my drawing, I do all of my filming for my YouTube videos, and I just run my business as a whole. So today what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you the grand tour. I'm just gonna grab this camera and take you around and then talk about some of the details here. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a vlog style today. All right, so this thing is on now. Let's go ahead and get started. This is the power cable for the camera that I'm using right now so I can be free to walk around. <laughs> and this is my door. As you can see here, I've got a big reflector here. This is what I use in my main videos so that I can light up the dark side of my face that really makes my face pop and look great. Over here, you can see some of my actually really, really old to most recent traditional works and some prints from college. I went to Georgia Tech for architecture. If we look here, you can see some of this stuff is from like 2013 it's all super yellow but I really love this work and I'm planning to really do some cool stuff with it that will be hopefully released soon here a lot of delays due to the unfortunate outbreak and uh, this thing right here is a light box and what it does is it just illuminates light all uh, over a huge surface and so that's for when you want to do a drawing and then you want to ink it and so you want to trace over the drawing that you've done and it shines light through the paper and so it's a really cool thing that I was able to buy since I won a lot of money um, from an art contest in college and I was able to just splurge and get that but uh, fortunately I don't use it anymore but you know it's still a really cool thing to have so over here is what I was talking about before this is the wall that has all the stuff that I don't want you to see the stuff that's kind of junk um, right now it's actually super clean I <laughs> there may or may not have been a chick-fil-a bag here or three of them or two pizza boxes we'll just keep that up to your imagination I'll start by telling you about this setup right here this is never been here before this is just what I have to film that first initial sequence that you saw but what I actually usually do is I have this on the ground right there and so that will film my videos when I'm doing that angle where you're looking at me and then the TV is in the background. This monitor right here is what I use to actually look at myself when I'm doing that setup so that I can make sure I look good on camera and everything's looking great and framed properly. And over here you can see this is going to be a recurring theme. I have like random things around here to keep me looking good like some hygienic and cosmetic looking things just to do a quick brush of my hair before I film and uh, every time I leave and enter just to keep my hair looking great. And then some lens wipes and you know we got to keep this this all perfectly cleaned up. Nobody can get in here without taking care of themselves first. <laughs> and then over here, just some stuff that I have that I don't use too often. There's my crane for my um, Sony a7 III right there. And then this is the most frequently used stand for my iPad. I actually use it in my lap and it feels great. Um, a lot better than just using my iPad with the Apple case that comes with it or doesn't come with it, but is supported. Another thing for me and my cosmetics. Hi everybody. This is my mirror that I use to check my face to make sure there's no food crumbs in my beard before I start filming. <laughs> but yeah, it's very necessary. Got a ring light there too. So it keeps everything looking good. I've had to become my own like makeup artist at some point. Just to talk a little bit more about my camera, I have a pretty expensive lens and camera set up here. Um, it's a Sony a7 III and then the lens is the Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter. I wish I could get it wider because I don't really need that super long end, but you know, it gets the job done for me. I'm hoping to get a really nice high quality wide angle for this camera to really fill out my lens and camera setup. And over here, this is just a bag for the diffuser that's on my work desk for my iPad, which I will start to get into now. So this desk over here is where kind of everything started because you know, everything started from my iPad. And so this desk is all about filming stuff for my iPad. And I also use it for filming unboxings. And I usually actually use the camera that I'm filming with now, which is the Sony a6400, but I switched it over because I felt that this was more suitable for this kind of vlogging setup. And then I have this camera here. This is the Panasonic GH4 and I'm using it with a seven to I believe 14 millimeter lens, which is super wide and perfect for this. I can actually go ahead and show you really quick um, how that looks. So over here you can see, that's my hand right there. You can see there, that's how it looks. And so that's how I do all my iPad live streams. That camera is connected to kind of my OG setup. So I have 
a Sirui horizontal arm that I had in my very, very, very first studio setup, if you can call that a studio, because I didn't even have a dedicated room. But now, instead of it being on a flimsy monopod, it's on a legit tripod here. It's a Manfrotto tripod, uh, very sturdy, has a lot of adjustments that you can make. I have a little bit of a counterweight here, not super necessary. Believe it or not, it is very tricky to level that thing. Um, and that's why I hate moving it at all, because I want to make sure that my iPad doesn't look super warped on footage. Going into the desk, you already know about most of this stuff. Um, I like using this, uh, what is it? Glorious PC Gaming Master Race mouse pad to just keep everything looking really fresh. I'm kind of tired of trying to match the lighting for the iPad and then the white table. It's super, super frustrating to do. I don't really recommend it unless you have a better lighting setup available. One day I plan to match the quality that Apple has one day, but that's gonna take a lot more space. As for my monitors, I have two LG monitors here, both 4K, both 27 inches, and they're on these, uh, you're gonna notice I don't remember the names of a lot of stuff. They are both vase amountable and they're on these arms, these really heavy duty arms. If I can get rid of this thing. So they're on these heavy duty arms that allow me to swivel them in any direction. So that makes this a perfect live streaming setup so I can have all the comments, um, reading you guys what you're saying to me, see the actual live footage, monitor the recording on YouTube just to make sure it doesn't go down, and then look at my reference all at the same time. So that's really, really great. And then over here, you can see the very first kind of professional light I got. This is a Yongnuo Air 600, I think. Pretty cheap, I think it's around 100 bucks. Um, it's on a monopod that's just really, really pushed up against my acoustic panels right there. And it's bright, but it's a little too bright for this setup, so I found that having this diffuser over it like that really, really helps the lighting look a lot better. Like it's way, way, way better. And I do recommend a lot of people are actually interested in this kind of setup. Having top down lighting really sucks because there's so much glare. But when you have lighting coming from the back over here, and then you have lighting like this coming this way just to prevent it from getting too dark. It creates this really lovely kind of moody setup, especially with the back um, black background. So I recommend you do that. Ideally, you want your light source to be a little bit further back, to be a little bit more powerful and your diffuser to be closer so you can get a really, really soft lighting. But you know, that's why this place is too small and that's why I'm moving. Another thing about this, whoa, my hand is so, so <laughs> cramped from holding this so tight. So this is my microphone, my Shure SM7B. This is what I use for all of my live streams and most of my videos here and in the beginning of this video, I sound great on it. It just makes me sound exactly like how I want to sound and how I will sound if you actually meet me in real life. It's attached to this really cool, really industrial, solid iron weighted frameworks mic stand and it's counterweighted as well. So those headphones over there are like the Sony W1000 something, whatever headphones. They're Bluetooth, of course, because you know, I don't need any more cables and I use those for just casual listening for my computer. And right there is my hard drive reader and I use it to read my hard drives because after I broke my hard drive in my computer, I decided I'm just not gonna keep them there anymore and I'm just gonna have them read like this and then store them when I need to. I don't really recommend this brand because it can't read too hard drives at once, like you would think since it has two bays that you can put it in at once, but it, it works pretty well for just one at a time. Right here, I've got my Mix Pre 6. I used to use it for all of my videos. It's very powerful. Um, especially if you want to do like podcasts, but I actually just use it for ASMR right now. So I have a couple microphones here. Um, these are Rode NT1 microphones and I have them up on Blue Yeti or just blue microphone stands. I really love how they look um, compared to the Rode ones. And yeah, they were right there set up in a left and right ear channel and uh, connected there. I don't really do as much often right now because YouTube for my main channel has gotten so busy, but I really love this thing. It's great. Back here under my desk, as you can see, I just keep more junk there. Um, yeah, nothing really too important. I use that book bag for carrying old cords, use those shoes for just leaving when I need to leave. Uh, I usually have another pair of shoes around here, but I think they're in my room. And there's, there's some more shoes and an extra seat cushion because sometimes this seat hurts because I've been here too much and so I want to change. And uh, there's a case for my crane and then a case for my uh, studio light. And under this table, apologies, is a hell of cables, just a complete mess. But yeah, these cables are a complete mess, but it's just the way it is, you know, like sometimes 
I need to change what which, which monitor I want to use so I just have to move the cables around again and it's just I've tried I've tried honestly to manage it in the beginning but things have just gotten chaotic and then this thing right here is one of the few little storage boxes I have um, I just have this one for pretty much just junk but I love these because they're super super portable they look super clean they match the aesthetic that I'm going for and they're super durable I think they're rated for like 400 pounds on top so I do like to use them as step stools for ex accessing higher things in my studio this thing right here is intentionally laid out like this this is how I get my phone charged wherever I need to in my room just a typical Amazon basics iPhone cable. So we, before I get into my entertainment wall, I want to talk about my chair, Secret Labs. I love this chair. I have done a lot of research before I got into this studio and I decided to go with this. Uh, pro tip, or no, not pro tip, but fun fact. This is the same exact model that uh, Caleb City uses, so I almost fell down. <laughs> Um, I really love it. Uh, it looks so much better in my opinion than the leather ones and I've had it for like eight months now and it still held up really nicely and I've eaten in this chair which I shouldn't have done and but it looks really great. It feels really nice. It stays cool because it's you know this fabric material and yeah they come in a few sizes but I'll have a link in the description if you want to pick one of these up in particular. By the way it has a really nice feature where you can lean back not all the way back like PewDiePie's chair but pretty far back to where I can take a quick nap if I get kind of tired. Right here in my way we have this little stand. I use this stand for social media so when you get serious and you want to roll with the big boys this is what you want to use. It's basically just a little tiny stand like a little tripod stand that I have these small rig tubes hooked up to and so I've connected them so I can make this any height I want and then at the top is a connector for my phone so if I grab my phone here I can show you how it would look so if I just have that there what I can do is I can do a quick Instagram story of what I'm drawing and I can also do a quick Instagram story of what I'm doing over here on my iPad or just anywhere in the studio and I don't have to worry about holding it so that makes it really really nice. So over here we've got the brains of the room, the control center. This is my computer, a desktop computer that I've built myself. Uh, the most important specs are my 2080 Ti that's sitting right there in Ergo Josh Pink. Uh, really, really necessary for editing and having so many different 4K monitors plugged into it. Um, even this thing, especially when I'm gaming, it can't handle all of the monitors plugged in. It can only handle three, and then if I'm not gaming, it can actually handle all four monitors plugged in. So that's really cool and really necessary for me. And then I have a 9900K uh, Intel CPU in there with the Linus Tech Tips blacked out edition of the Noctua NDH14. This is probably sounding like a lot of crazy tech words for some of you, but I really love this stuff and uh, I've been building computers ever since I was in college. Speaking of computers, I've got every single USB plug in there filled up, so like I'm probably gonna have to get another one or a laptop soon because things are just getting, you know, having to plug in and out so much is really getting stressful. Um, this is a typical let's see hard drive you see a lot of youtubers have i'm using it to back up some of my most important stuff i have a corsair headphone stand here i really love that rgb look and what it does to my studio and uh, some controllers for my rift s and then my headphones these are the sennheiser hd 660 s and so I use these for monitoring my audio for like now when I'm gonna edit this audio later and I really need to hear it really crisply. I really need to have that open back experience so I can tell exactly how everything is sounding. The cool thing about this computer is that it's super quiet at all times unless I'm playing games or rendering. So that means when I'm live streaming, the only thing that's really loud that's besides me is going to be either my Cintiq fans or my AC. And so I can turn off my AC and decrease the brightness of my Cintiq so everything's all good. Over here we have Stitch and then we have my Wi-Fi solution there. I, I do recommend Orbi. It can be a little bit difficult to set up, but I actually just recommend mesh Wi-Fi systems like that in general because you never have to worry about getting dropouts in your home again. Over here related, this is a case for one of my hard drives. Drives. This is a an eight terabyte hard drive, I believe. And so this is the newest of the three that I have now. And this one is empty, but I'm going to end up filling it up. But yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's my hard drive there. And then I have some more hard drives in here just for some old storage. And the remotes I have on my side table are just the TV remote, 
the remote for my speakers, and then the remote for my studio light, and my Xbox One controller that I have synced up to my computer because I'm PC Master Race, no Xbox here. As for my TV, this is the centerpiece if I grab the remote. I have this thing here and normally I wouldn't have my feet like this, I would have them on one of my little stools here, but um, I have this thing here because I don't have any windows in this room. So what I like to do is just have this thing set to something that's going to make me feel more relaxed. Either it's going to be a cool design like that, or I can switch to some artwork here. So one of my favorites is this one. Victoria Falls. I really love this one and it makes it feel like I'm, I don't know, like I'm there and it looks like a realistic scenery from Final Fantasy 13 if any of you know that game. Um, but that's one of my favorite parts of the game and so that really reminds me of it. Just looking at this shot right here looks amazing. But yeah, that's that's how I, that's how I kind of relax and pretend that I have a mirror out into the open world. Or not a mirror, but a window. So let me make sure my cables aren't getting too tangled up here. This is a regular problem with my studio. Definitely need to find a solution. Oh God, this is actually really bad. <laughs> yeah. All right, if you're not already super motion sick, it's probably not gonna get much better. <laughs> Apologies in advance. And over here on this wall, you can see the only artwork print that I have up for myself. It's actually printed on metal by Displate. Um, I really, really love this piece. This is one of the first pieces that I was actually really proud of. And so I decided to go ahead, get myself a print of it. Um, and then over here, you can see this sculpture that I made from Georgia Tech. It's not really a sculpture. We intended to make a lamp and we had to design it to be something creative for ourselves. And so it's made out of plywood and we cut it on a CNC and it's really cool. I decided to just leave that here with one of my mood lamps in it. Then over there we can see the crowning achievement of this studio here, my 100,000 subscriber plaque. Thank you guys so much for that. Really, really appreciate it. And we have another stitch here. Just chilling, vibing with the pink light. And over here we have this really interesting storage system. So if I go ahead and move this over, you can see there are these like little cubbies here. It's a really cheap kind of assembly, but it looks so nice and it kind of matches and mirrors the dark black cube of my computer. So what I have in here is just random stuff that I need to access semi-frequently. And uh, you can see my Rift S headset over there. And um, yeah, just keep some stuff in there, keeps things organized. And before I move on, I'm gonna talk a little bit about these drawers. There's really just storage in there. That one is from Amazon. I'll try to leave a link in the description because that's the one that was the best looking. After I set it up, there's actually no issues with it. See, there's not really much interesting in there but I really love how that looks. This one was super expensive and when I constructed it, this door never fully closes and uh, it's slightly hanging open, but it still looks super dope with that black and white gloss. You can see here, if I have something expensive or anything related to computers and cameras, I just keep the box so that I can sell it later if I need to and I just have some other random stuff there like an old Xbox 360 controller just for a sentimental value. And then these drawers are set up in different categories. So this one is my computer drawer. This is where I keep all of my geeky computer tech stuff when I need to switch something out or upgrade my computer. Um, I just keep all this stuff here. You can see there's an electrostatic band in there. And then if I push this back, you see it has that nice soft close. I have a drawer for other stuff that I use kind of semi-frequently. I send a lot of stuff back to Amazon. Um, and then I have a ruler here, some sketchbooks, and some lotion that I use to keep my hands looking great on camera. Not for anything else that you guys think that I use it for. Don't leave 50 comments on this video like you did on my last one. I can't leave this out anymore because you guys will go crazy. This is for keeping my hands moisturized. I get a lot of compliments for my hands and so this is the reason for it. Keeping everything moisturized every time keeps things looking fresh and it helps you guys focus on the art instead of the horrible terror of my first video where my hands were ashy and I suddenly got hundreds of thousands of views and I still probably get comments to this day about how ashy my hands were and I'll never forget that. <laughs> and this drawer right here is where I just have everything that I need to grab fairly quickly um, day to day. So you can see my hard drives there and they're named, um, my keys and my wallet for when I just need to jump out somewhere, a lot of claws for cleaning my glasses or for my many screens screwdrivers, pliers, and lip balm again. Gotta make sure my lips aren't chapped. And some more aromatherapeutic <laughs> hand lotion. Um, and then some AirPods, you know, we bought that life. And uh, yeah, everything you could possibly need at short notice. And then in that drawer, uh, I think that's from Ikea. It's like the Ikea Ekit little 
cubby desk thing. This is called the maison, maison, I think the French word for house side table here. And uh, I don't remember what that one was. And so the most important area of my studio now, this is where I do most of my artwork and do most of my live streams. Starting off with the table, this is a Jarvis table uh, standing desk by Fully. And so I love this thing because it's a standing desk and so I can just press a button and it moves up. And if you get a new one now, this will actually be touchscreen, which is really cool. It's kind of tricky to build, but I really enjoy it. It's super sturdy. Like this thing is heavy, especially with the stand for it, but it just goes up easily. So I can stand up and work and I recommend you do that. If you have this kind of studio set up and you're working from home, you need to be getting up regularly every hour at least and moving around. So definitely key. It's not even an option really if you want to have a long and healthy life. So if I go ahead and move this back down, we can talk about my Cintiq. So this is the Wacom 32 inch Cintiq Pro that Wacom kindly has sent to me. I really, really love this thing. I've been doing amazing work with, <laughs> I've been doing amazing work with this device, um, but I love this because it has a SD card slot. So I don't have to be messing around with my computer every time I wanna read footage from my camera. I can just plug in everything I need from it because it's taking in, taking up so many ports already. Um, they also sent me the Ergo stand, which is amazing. It allows me to just move this like so easily. I can move it up and swivel it and it's just perfect. And it's touchscreen as well, which is super helpful too. So like, you know, I can minimize that and look at uh, Skate Jance if I want to. And over there we can say hi to Jerry. That's Jerry right there. And then on the two ends of my table here we have my u6 canto u6 speakers love blasting those when i'm doing camera stuff that doesn't need my own audio and just listening to music while i'm drawing these right here are my first kind of semi-professional lights from elgato they're key lights and i can change them from warm to very cool lighting whenever i need to from my phone or computer so i love that and back here we have the audio interface that i use much more often now the go xlr mini um, super great i recommend it to everyone because you can actually edit your audio on the fly and as you as people hear you on your live stream they can hear the correct audio with much less noise and all of your eqs balanced out and over here another product by elgato we have my stream deck love this thing i can just switch between modes here you can see i can switch to starting i can switch to ending switch to my ipad switch to my main camera and uh yeah it's it's just awesome and i really need to make even more use of it um hopefully when i have more desk space when i move 2s yeah mx master 2s sorry i was thinking it wasn't 2s because i'm actually playing um, Nier Automata and I'm like, wait, am I mixing up the characters' names? No, but that's the MX Master 2X. Um, and I have another one over there so that it looks great on camera. And also it's a pain to be moving your mouse back and forth. Then I have this crazy mouse right here that I use to edit videos because I need all of these little shortcuts, trust me. Um, it's so helpful to get things really working quickly. And I have this little really cheap ranky dank, rinky dink table here for when I need my keyboard and my Cintiq out at the same time. Usually when I have this, I'll have my Cintiq facing upright. And over here on this end, we have something else that I find very key to having a studio that you're happy to work in. This is a candle warmer and I have a Craft and Kin candle right here. I love this scent. I definitely recommend them for or just any candle to be honest because it really makes it nice it makes you excited to come back to get to work because you know you're going to be in this space that smells great for the rest of the day and then the newest addition of my studio is going to be this professional lighting setup that i have here i have a really sturdy c stand weighted by like 25 pounds of random weights in this camera bag here and uh yeah it's super sturdy it's great it holds this light up and um i use this to cast really really soft light this thing is like a four foot wide uh uh what do you call these things it's just like a light dome or something and it really makes faces and people look amazing in in your shots so i use it for myself and the quality of my videos has shot up like usually my camera for my videos that i've been doing lately is like right here and i'm sure you guys remember this kind of shot and so this is how i do things and with that light up there it just makes everything look immaculate and usually i'll also 
Let me see if I can grab it. I'll have this light here. This is the aperture light. Um, I can actually have this set to like any color I want and I'll just throw this back here. Oh, I just hit my head and I'll just leave that there and I'll cast some lighting back against my Cintiq and it just makes that setup look perfect. And again, to torture you guys before <laughs> we finish this video, this is the underside of this desk. Absolute chaos. I tried my best to cable manage in the beginning, but it's just so much stuff that I have to kind of swap out over time that, you know, those things ended up getting ripped out and all those cables are now hanging there. Pro tip, by the way, if you have a microphone like that, please try not to have it touching any power cables. I didn't even check for that today. I really hope my audio isn't messed up because it will have a terrible noise effect if you have your microphone cable touching a power cable like this. So let's pray that didn't happen because you guys will suffer because I'm not filming this again. <laughs> but yeah, try not to ever have them touching power cables or video cables for that matter. And that's my ceiling fan, which gets in the way a lot. I've actually hit that thing there. So yeah, that was fun. All right, so let's go ahead and spin this chair back around and uh, let's make it look all cool and presentable so that I can jump into it and start start this next scene right here and pretend like I'm some cool YouTuber just getting done filming some stuff. So yeah, let's go. Oh, okay, that was a lot. Uh, hopefully I can cut a lot of that footage down in post, but I hope you enjoyed a lot of that. So the, the main reason that everything is separated by walls is because the space is super small. It's only 10 by 11 feet, I believe. And so each wall is just set up for the back space. That's the space for all the stuff I don't want you to see on camera. Um, the back over here behind me is where it's just entertainment and I have my computer and a little bit of storage. And then to the left and right is where I get a lot of the most important work done. So a lot of people don't really like this, but I really love the carpet feel. It, it's so nostalgic and comforting. And one of the biggest parts in creating a studio space, I believe, is making it comfortable. Drawing and, you know, just all of these business tasks can be really stressful sometimes. So just having a place that's really comfortable for you is one of the most important things. And I'm sure you've already noticed by now, you know, I probably talked about it already, this cord and all of the other cords you see on the video. This place is a cord hell. It's like, it's there's no cable management. There's like maybe a little bit of cable management. But the main reason for that is I have like three cameras and they all have up to two cords coming out of them that need to be freely moved around. I changed my entire camera setup for this video alone. And so this place really is a studio. It kind of needs to be able to breathe and stretch and be transformed. So I found that trying to have this really nice, super clean, pristine setup where all of my cables are managed perfectly just didn't work out because I was ripping them out one, two, three weeks later and trying to change the organization of things. I am hoping though to have a lot more organization when I do move in the summer. I want a bigger place. This 110 square feet is just not, not gonna cut it. I can't even rotate my main uh, studio light because the walls are just too, too close. They'll just slam into the wall if I want to rotate it. And the fan itself just gets in the way as well. And to talk a little bit more about the comfort, one of the biggest parts of the studio that I do love is the lighting. So what I can do is from my phone, I can go ahead and turn off these lights here, my Elgato lights, and then I can go into my Lifex bulbs that are in the ceiling light, and then I can just change it to whatever mood I want. And so I don't know about you, but this looks pretty nice. And so what I'll probably do tonight when I'm editing is set it to like this like nice indigo kind of purple and just tone it down, the intensity down, all these other lights will be off and I can just relax and vibe out. And you know, sometimes if I'm doing artwork, I'll just change the light to a theme I feel that fits the artwork that helps me get in the mood. And it really helps you just melt into the space and you don't really have to worry about anything and it reduces stress and that just makes the quality of your work just shoot right up. So now as I turn it back to being professional, you can see although that space can be really relaxed, I can also make it super focused, super intense and ready for film so that you guys can see all of the good details that I'm trying to show you. And one of the last things that I do kind of regret about this space is that I have such a small amount of artwork. I picked this white wall setup because I knew since I wouldn't have lights, 
I would really need a lot of help to get everything well lit. But I never ended up really wanting to post things on the wall because I never knew exactly how much acoustic foam I would end up using. So in the future, I definitely plan to have a lot more artwork here to help inspire me because seeing artwork that I love is really, really big um, when it comes to making me feel motivated to go after art with like 110 intensity. Now, you, you may be looking at all this stuff and be like, oh my God, Josh is so rich. He's like loaded, but I've accumulated all this stuff over the course of, we're coming very close to three years now. And um, pretty much everything that I gained from all of this, I put back into it. And I'm a pretty frugal person outside of that for the most part. I don't buy a lot of things that people buy for entertainment. I don't go out almost at all. Like, trust me, like there's, you may think that I'm really well off, but this is just where I pump everything that I earn into. So everything here is like super high quality so that I can put back into the business and then make more and more and more. And so that's the goal here. And you can do the same. Um, you know, doesn't matter if you're starting off with a hundred bucks and you're just buying a single camera or you just have your phone and it happens to be a phone with a pretty decent camera and that's all you got, you know, it starts from there and then everything you get, you put back. So I hope that encourages you guys. For those of you who are interested in setting up your own studio, maybe you're interested in doing videos or you just want a space that you can feel comfortable in when you're working. And I will see you in the next video next week. And if not, try to make it to one of the live streams. They happen Mondays and Fridays. I don't really have a setup time, but you know, it is how it is. And if you want to get your own Secret Labs chair, link will be in the description and I will see you in the next one. Peace.